Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I want to do a video talking about how to treat burns and some things you need to think about when treating a burn victim. Now, I've done a couple of videos on categorizing burns, like what's a first degree, second, third degree burn, or superficial, partial thickness, full thickness burns. I've done a video on that, but we'll do a quick recap here in just a few minutes on that. But this is gonna be a video on how to treat burns. So let's talk about the different categories of burns here just for a few minutes. So you have a first degree burn. This is a superficial type burn. You get some redness to the skin. This will be caused obviously by sunburn or chemicals or something else that may have caused it heat related that cause you to get some redness of the skin here. There's no uh, blisters, non-life threatening injury, just causing some pain. A second degree type burn or partial thickness burn is where we start getting blisters. Now these are obviously painful uh, and we have to worry about the blisters here. Infection is huge with these burns. So uh, there again, depending on the area, now if you get some up in the throat, chest, face area, they can be life threatening, uh, but for the most part they're not. The, the biggest I worry about is infection. So we're gonna keep these clean, sterile, and we're gonna walk through that in a few minutes. And then we have a third degree burn or full thickness burn, which is all the way through the muscle to the bone. Um, this is going to be black charring for the most part. The skin can lose its colors. It's almost like a white uh, chalky type on the skin surface. Uh, it's not very flexible anymore. It's almost like a plastic. Um, there again, these hurt. Uh, the third degree burn actually doesn't hurt. I will reframe that because it's burned through the nerve endings. But everywhere you have a third degree burn, you have a second degree burn, and that is painful. Infection, there again, is huge. Uh, depending on the body surface area uh, that's involved, this could be life-threatening as well uh, just to do because our body is preventing infection, controlling uh, temperature regulation. So there's a lot of things going on with this style burn. Uh, this could be life-threatening if it's not managed very quickly and professionally. And just as a side note, some things you read, you, make, you can see a full thickness burn as a fourth degree burn as well. That's just a different category. As, uh, sometimes a fourth degree burn is all the way to the bone, but usually for most textbooks, most people you're talking to in a first aid class, First, second, third degree burns is how they're categorized. So one of the things we need to think about is the source of what's causing the burning. Is it a powder? Is it a chemical? Uh, like a radiator exploded onto you? Um, is it a firecracker that went off? Whatever we're looking at, what is the source? And how do we stop it from burning? So most of the time, I generally can brush off the powder, get the powder, whatever's uh, on you, brush it off, and then flush it with copious amounts of water. Lots of cool water is gonna help stop the burning process. Now, if we've got clothes on, things like that, we're gonna need to remove those as well. Uh, if it's sticking to the skin, where it's actually melted the skin, then we don't pull it off the skin, just cut around it, leave it in place. Uh, but the main source is obviously to stop the burning process. And you wanna make sure you're safe as well while you're doing this. Um, if you get injured while you're trying to rescue someone, you're not doing their, them very much help. And while we're on that stuff, just talk about lightning strikes. Um, it does happen, it's kind of a rare event, but people do get struck by lightning. Uh, most of the time they just get the static off of it. It hits the ground close to them, they get the static, and that's what someone says when they get struck by lightning. Um, when people actually get literally struck by lightning, um, it hits them and then it goes boom, it finds an exit. It takes the path of least resistance and may exit out. Uh, it may come into the shoulder, exit out to the hip, somewhere like that. Uh, these people, when they go into cardiac arrest, no matter what it is, you need to do CPR on them. You need to pull them to a safe place and perform CPR because you can get these people back. You can bring them back from a cardiac arrest because they went into cardiac arrest due to an outsource source, outside source like electricity, obviously, boom. Um, you may can get them back. Uh, so work them, work them hard, do good quality CPR, get an AED there. Uh, but if someone's been struck by lightning, don't just go, boop, they're dead. Um, do CPR, get an AED, call 911. So you're in that initial response and you're trying to stop the burning process. You've done it in cool water. Uh, you need to do this for about 10 minutes, all the way up to about 45 minutes. You need to leave it in the cool water to stop the burning process. So let's talk about treating a first degree burn. So we've stopped the burning process, cool water, cold water, whatever we get to, as long as it's clean water. Stop the burning process and then we're gonna put some aloe on it. You can do that as well. Uh, even essential oils. Now just be careful with essential oils, okay? Because we're, we're using lavender here and frankincense. So if it's a small area burn, like you've got burns, sunburn to your forearm, things like that, maybe into your chest, um, you can use it. Just be cautious because if it is starting to get into the blister process, like we're starting to get into a second reburn, uh, the oil can actually make the burning process worse. So if it's a minor burn, this works. Um, this works. But if you're starting in that secondary burn, 
I would stay away from it. It's kind of like the old, well, um, like I'm sure your grandparents, maybe even parents, used margarine or butter to rub on burns. And we actually figured that, that causes worse. Uh, it actually increases the burning process. So kind of stay away from it. Uh, but if it's just a minor burn, then essential oils work. Alloy works better. This cools. Just trying to cool the temperature down. With our second and third degree type burns, we do want to cover those up, keep them sterile, keep them clean. But the first degree burn, you don't have to do that. Just stop the burning process with cool water and then leave it open. So I'm going to lump second degree burns and third degree burns treatment as far as the same thing, okay? Because they pretty much are as far as your first response. So you can use the burn cream as there. Uh, they make burn gel, uh, the pads as well. I just don't have any to show you on camera. But yes, those are absolutely, those are uh, useful here in a situation. So you can use the Vaseline gauze because if you start putting just regular gauze on it, when you go to pull it off, that's gonna be the problem because this is gonna stick to your burn. So if you have petroleum gauze here, uh, you can use that for the burn so it doesn't stick. Now some of this burn cream, like I've got my pocket here, this has a little bit of lidocaine mixed into it, so it's gonna help with the pain, like we're talking about, those secondary burns, uh, even the first degree burns is gonna help with the pain. So these burn packs work. So you wanna keep the wound extremely clean. Now, if you don't have any sterile bandaging, you can use just clean t-shirts, kind of wrap it up, whatever you need to, but you wanna try to keep the wound as clean as possible. So that's why I keep the sterile bandaging. So this is sterile bandaging here. This is non-sterile. This is just out in the open here. So these are cheaper. These are a little more expensive, but these will work. So you can just wrap your four x four on it here and then wrap it up uh, where you're clean and keep it from um, getting to the environment, getting all the dirt and grime in it. Let the body heal itself. So with these burns that you have the blisters, do not pop the blisters. I know it's tempting, uh, but what's gonna happen is the body's gonna start healing from the inside out and it will break the blister when it's ready to. So you can use an Israeli bandage for this as well. Um, I love the Israeli bandage, it's got a ton of uses, but this is sterile, so you can uh, wrap the injury uh, with this. Only problem is it's gonna stick when you go take it off. So you're gonna need some, maybe some warm water, some saline, some salt water solution, uh, things like that to help get it so it doesn't stick to the skin, so you're not ripping it open, causing more trouble. So if you drank something really hot or you bit into a piece of food that was hot and you burnt your tongue, you can sprinkle a little bit of sugar on there and that will take care of the burning process. Also an ice cube or popsicle, something like that will help with the burning process of your tongue. So if you're dealing with one of these burns and it's a long-term care situation, your help can't get here for whatever reason, you can't go to the hospital, EMS isn't coming, grid down situation, uh, whatever's going on, uh, then infection is gonna be one of those things you've gotta keep an eye on, gotta watch. So me personally, I probably would go ahead and start on some antibiotics uh, immediately. Um, if you're dealing with these burns long term and the blisters break, that's okay. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, just make sure you wash them with warm, soapy water uh, to try to keep them clean while you're changing out the dressings. So thank you for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Bring the right gear and the right training. Also, if you'd like to support the YouTube channel, we have a few different ways you can do that. You can shop through our Amazon affiliate link. I'll put a link down below for that. Uh, you can go to, our, of course, our medical store. Uh, you can buy our supplies, kits there. That helps support. And then we also have a Patreon page. All the information is down below if you'd like to support us. We appreciate it. I've done a bunch of videos. I haven't really done a bunch, like two videos, but hey, whatever. It's my word to get yours. Non-life-threatening for the most part. It uh, just hurts. Some alloy, 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 like rims or alloy, like oil. Hello. I can't think of it. Hello. I can't say it. Hello. Hello. Hello.